Oh hi, I've enjoyed many Woody Allen films. Unless you've been completely in your own bubble for the last 20 years, you probably know Woody Allen for things outside of his filmmaking. Gross, disgusting transgressions. So, can I like Woody Allen films even if I'm not too fond of the person? Or is that just giving them a free pass? There's a 1967 essay, which I absolutely have not read, written by Roland Barthes. It's entitled, The Death of the Author. Except it's all in French and junk. Now, I may not have personally read it, but it was brought up in many an English class that I attended, and it's also referenced in many other media studies. And I'm sounding completely pretentious, I know, so it must mean it's a Thursday. This essay changed the prevailing wisdom that the author was the authority of how the text should be read. What ethnicity were they? What was their socioeconomic standing? Where did they lean politically? And what has love got to do, got to do, got to do with it? Barthes found this much too simplistic and that it gave too much power to the author instead of the intended audience of the piece who would bring their own upbringing and background to critique what they were reading. Now he was using this as a way to look at literature specifically, but I like to use it as a way of engaging with all types of media, movies, TV, comics, messages written on bathroom walls. For me, the worst types of classes were those where the teacher would stand at the front and drone on and on and ask questions like, what does the author mean by these color of curtains? Which I just think is the least interesting question to ask, especially when it's obvious that it represents the failed policies of the proletariat. What the author means is less important than how I experienced the story. And because I'm a complete and utter narcissist, I do truly believe that. Whether the author was a drunk, or a Catholic bishop, or a 12-year-old savant, it's an interesting biographical tidbit, but really doesn't impact on how I react to the story. Now, I've been skating around the true topic of today's video, and yes, I said skating. I've been scraping frost off my car, so winter is actually here. Thanks a lot, Jon Snow. It's your fault the wall came down. How does this translate to bad people? Woody Allen and Roman Polanski are most likely child rapists, and yet I still like many of their films. Orson Scott Card wrote probably the best sci-fi story of all time, and yet he's a big ol' homophobe. Recently, Joss Whedon was revealed to be a less than reputable person towards his wife. Louis C.K. apparently masturbates in front of women who don't want him to. And I'm sure there are many more that we could point to throughout history. Let me know your favorite ones down in the comments below. Nice engagement, Kyle. But for me, the work is the work, and the person's the person no matter how small. My friend William White is a much smarter person than I am, and so I recently asked him, does separating the art from the artist simply trick ourselves so that we can continue liking something? Hello, my name is William White, and I was asked to talk about the death of the author and separating art from the artist, and generally about how I think that's a bad thing, and I think it's unhealthy, and I think that artists should be held entirely accountable for the things that they do in their personal life, and the only way to do that is to connect them to their art. Because if we continue allowing them to either have monetary success or just like a, a success or a platform for their art, or, I mean, while they're still alive, if we're still holding their art to a higher standard than we're actually holding them to, then that gets to be a problem, and it kind of blurs the lines between what we're finding actually good about the art and what we find good about the person who's making it. Some trickier things about this is with people who have maybe been, like, brilliant, game-changing artists like Alfred Hitchcock or John Lennon who created entire filmographies and discographies of work that people generally regard as being uh, incredible. The thing about that is they are dead, so they will no longer get monetary success or uh, will no longer have a platform for their art. John Lennon beating his wife and being kind of an asshole in general and Alfred Hitchcock being incredibly abusive um, especially to the actresses that uh, were in his films. It's also more difficult because both of their art forms are were made entirely collaboratively. So there are a lot of people who work on a film set. There are actors and there are gaffers and grippers and directors. Well, Alfred Hitchcock was a director, but there are camera operators and assistants and crew and extras and all of those people work to make a film. Supporting the work that Alfred Hitchcock made 
is also supporting all of the other artists who were collaborators on it. It's not about like, oh, dragging someone because like they can't defend themselves or anything like that. It's that he did these really bad things. And I think that it's dangerous uh, to disconnect those things from the work that they did because it will just prove to further artists in the future that they will be able to get away with stuff and still make their art as long as, you know, they die before they go to prison or something. And then people can just like ignore that and just focus on all the good art that they made and how much they, they like that one song. Like some really good examples are like Woody Allen or Jared Leto or, I mean, Roman Polanski, people are still defending that guy. And that's like, he fled the country and he's been in France for decades and, it, and he's still making movies. And the big problem there is it just like, if we don't separate, well, if we do, if, if we are separating the art from the artists, which I don't think is possible, but if we say that we are and we're doing this, it continues giving a platform to people who are doing horrible things. I would rather in a hypothetical world have half as good of artwork in the world if all of the people were fucking better. So thanks, Kyle, for getting me involved. Uh, I hope that you found something out of this that works. Hey, hey, all of Kyle's viewers, it was cool uh, chatting with you. Uh, catch you around on the flip side. Thanks, William. There have definitely been critics of Barth's criticism, and I'm sure there's some that are watching this video right now. I'm not here to say that I am right and that everyone else is wrong, even though that is true. I think it just comes down to how you view art. Should a work be judged on its own merits, or should the creators of that art also be judged? And for me, I think it's just more interesting to look at the work that's in front of me. Just know that I always present my prettiest side to the audience, so judge accordingly. But of course, I'm much more interested in knowing what you think about this. Do you think that the art and the artist should be separated? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. And if you wanna be part of an exclusive club, you can also go and support me over on Patreon. I should probably learn French so I can go and learn that essay. But essay is Spanish. I don't, I don't know how, language works.